Today's podcast is not for the faint of heart. Today we will be talking about John Wayne Gacy. This episode contains topics of sex, murder, molestation, and worse. Listener discretion is advised. On March 17, 1942, John Wayne Gacy was born. His father was a World War I veteran. His father was very verbally abusive and even physically abusive to John and would constantly compare John to his sisters. Between the ages of 6 to 10, John was molested by a teenage daughter of his mother's friend. Later on, John and a friend of his were accused of sexually fondling a young girl. John had a very hard childhood. He was very overweight and an unhealthy child. He had cognitive heart condition. This was deemed as a failure on John's part by his own father. John was alienated from his peers at school and didn't have many friends. He had several seizures and blackouts which his father deemed fake and seeking attention. Then John discovered that he liked men and suffered judgment over this. Now John did not graduate high school but did graduate from Northwestern Business College in Chicago. He became a salesman and a manager of a shoe company. In 1964, he became engaged to Marilyn Myers. Her father owned some KFC restaurants. John relocated his family to Waterloo, Iowa, where the KFC restaurants became a self-building contractor and Democratic precinct captain in Chicago. John joined a club called the Jolly Joker Clown Club. Here, he would establish his characters known as Pogo the Clown and Patches the Clown. There is no known evidence that John actually murdered anybody as a clown, but he has still been deemed the infamous killer clown. In 1968, John was accused of sexually assaulting a teenage boy and attempted another. Now, John was convicted and got a 10-year prison sentence. During this time, his wife divorced and had a full custody of the kids. John would be released on parole in the summer of 1970 after serving 18 months. Then another teen claimed that John would force the teen into a car and drove him to John's place and tried to force sex. John was arrested, yet the child didn't go to court and the mom helped buy John a house. Now, let's just think about this logically. You're telling me you're going to pay for the person who is just accused of molesting your child you're gonna help pay for their house that is insane to me because i guess this mother felt bad because it turned out to be a quote-unquote false accusation or whatever i don't know but this house would go on to become the infamous house in which john committed every single murder john established a construction business called pdm contractors Here, he would use the young men as a proposition for sex. If not met, violence would be threatened. These young men were young adults and high school students. All the while, John married Carol Hoff and maintained a positive and successful public front. Now, again, how in the world do you maintain a positive public front when you were thrown in jail for molesting children and I don't really know if the courts really proved anything but I would think that they did and then the second account you know proved to be false how do you still maintain a public front as a good person in a construction business it's mind-boggling to me but anyways in January of 1972 the first known murder occurred as John stabbed a 16 year old Timothy McCoy to death after sex. What had happened was John had presumed that McCoy wanted to kill him because McCoy stood at the door with a knife, but John had realized after McCoy died that McCoy had actually a knife because he had just finished making breakfast for the two. John discovered his sexual gratification for killing McCoy and he became a serial killer because of this. John would prey on young men as he always had and have sex with them. Then he would strike and kill. A signature of his killings would actually be using handcuffs and claiming that he was showing them a magic trick. 
By 1978, John's crawl space had no more space for bodies, so he disposed of the victims in the Des Plaines River. On December 11, 1978, Robert Peast went missing after telling his mom that he was going to meet John for business. Priest's family filled a missing <clears throat> Priest's family filed a missing persons report. This led to a search in his home. Police found police badges, a pistol, hypodermic needles, pornographic material, and items that belonged to the victims. More investigations happened and eventually police searched the crawl space. Gacy confessed to killing about 30 people. In 1979, a few months after his arrest, the house was demolished because the community wanted it to be done with. They claimed that if the devil was real, he lived in that house. Come February 6, 1980, John faced trial. The trial revolved around the question of is John mentally insane and needs to go to the mental hospitals? John tried to argue that he had multiple personality disorder, and John pleaded not guilty by insanity and went on trial for 33 murder charges. Then, on March 12, 1980, John was found guilty of the 33 murders and was found sane. Now, if you did not know, when you plead insanity in a court, you don't go to jail. Instead, you're stuck in a mental institute, and it is very hard to prove that you are sane when you're in the institutes. Some people plead insanity to avoid jail and they think that they can either escape the facility or prove that they are sane and it'll make life better. Usually this makes life actually worse and it'd be better off for you to go to prison. For 14 years, John spent his days in Menard Correctional Center in Chester. John took up painting as an art that he would do in the pastime. On May 19, 1994, John died of lethal injection by given the death penalty. Now, in sociology, there is a way to classify a killer. They are either organized or disorganized. An organized killer kills with a plan. Usually this is premeditated murder. Then, you know, you have the disorganized one who just kills with no rational thought and just out of compulsion. Kind of think of the a disorganized killer as the werewolf man kills with no rational thought just kills think of an organized killer as kind of organized crime or maybe like an assassin like think of Lee Harvey Oswald then there are four categories of a killer hedonistic visionary missionary oriented and power or control the hedonistic killers all kill for pleasure, just for personal pleasure. This is the ones that you'll hear about in a true crime podcast usually. And it's a very broad category still, the hedonistic one, because the pleasure could be for multiple different things. Power or control killers kill so they feel that they are actually powerful and have control over somebody's life. Mission-oriented killers kill to quote-unquote cleanse the world or a group of people, or an ideology, or something like that. A really great example of this is in the movie Seven. John Doe is a mission-oriented killer. And then lastly, the visionary killer, which is the most rare killer, and is also one of the most interesting killers. This killer believes that God or the devil or some supernatural being has sent them to kill. Usually it's God or the devil, and... Nine times out of ten, I would say they believe that God has sentenced them to come and kill people, but sometimes it is the devil that they claim. John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown, was an organized killer. John picked out his victims and would invite them over to his house and murder them there. He even planned the disposal of the victims. He killed for hedonistic tendencies. Now, John had a great joy in killing. After killing McCoy, John said this, quote, that's when I realized that death was the ultimate thrill, end quote. John was a homosexual who killed usually after sex. Now, this type of hedonistic is one powered by lust, but at the same time, he killed for the thrill of murder. So, John falls into both hedonistic lust and hedonistic thrill. More so thrill, according to his quote on that I just read to you guys about the entire death is the ultimate thrill. 
Now, of course, John Wayne Gacy is probably the most famous and most notorious, or I guess I should say infamous and notorious, serial killers. Another one would be Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, the Zodiac Killer, even though we don't know who the Zodiac Killer is, but John Wayne Gacy is probably the most infamous out there, up there with Ted Bundy. Now, the reason that John Wayne Gacy is so, so infamous is because, number one, he was around kids constantly, not just teenagers, but even little kids in the hospitals when he was a clown. He would perform at different events of cheer up the kids in the hospital or go to birthday parties or whatever. And once they found all this stuff about him, it became very, very unnerving to the public. They were more cautious about who, what strangers were around their kids. Another reason is John kept on rebuilding his um, public reputation in a lot of different ways. There's actually a photo out there that you can see him with First Lady when Jimmy Carter was in office. So Jimmy Carter's wife, the First Lady, when he was in Chicago. Because that's how important he was, politically speaking, in this district of Chicago. And you got to think about this. Back then, Chicago was a much bigger main U.S. city. That's a pretty big U.S. city. But still... He would commit murder, molest children, and all of the other stuff, and still maintain a good image. Even when he relocated into Iowa and built up a construction business, he had a very good reputation up until the police found the crawl space, and then the entire neighborhood and really town or city that he was in called for the house to be destroyed. But that's the story of John Wayne Gacy, more so at a base level. I'm sure you could go much deeper into the story. He was a troubled child who, like many other killers, bad things happened to him. So he played with those bad things and did them to other people. Found pleasure and joy of it and became a psychopath throughout time. Now, I will say before this ends, I want to read you guys two quotes and briefly touch on his paintings. One of the quotes that he says I think is very interesting. Quote, a clown can get away with murder. Now, this quote, he proved to be false, but also kind of proved it to be right. He did get away with murder for a very, very, very long time and constantly could cover it up. But there was a certain point in time in which he got caught. And the only reason he got caught is because he didn't play his cards right and he let it up to be a little bit loose because the police were suspecting of him and put more search warrants down for his house and searched in his entire house. Because the first search, you know, they saw the victim's uh, belongings. And then the second, which is a very bone-chilling quote. Quote, I should have never been convicted of anything more serious than running a cemetery without a license. End quote. So in John's mind, he did nothing wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. He was just running a cemetery with no license. And then his painting life. You guys can go look up his paintings. His paintings are very different. They're very unusual. They're a little bit frightening and just weird. He did a self-portrait of himself as Pogo the Clown. And maybe it was Patches. I can't remember. And he even said, I think Pogo is the clown that's more fun. Patches is the more serious clown. John Wayne Gacy definitely had something wrong in his mind and was very creepy, but he has been a topic of conversation ever since he was caught, you know, um, and killed. I mean, how do you let a person like this just get away with murder and everything? There was a part, I think I mentioned it in there, where... The police showed up to the house one time, and he had a a teenager, I think, had escaped and had told the police a report about how he was essentially a sex slave to John and was about to die. The police went to John's house, and John said it was all consensual, and the police just kind of said, oh, okay, and just walked away. Very insane how John got away with all these things and how, I guess, he used his popular influence to cover up a lot of his crimes and just bury them under his floorboards and in the 
walls of his house. But anyways, I hope you all in some degree learned something today. I hope you enjoyed it and the, the fact that you got to learn something. Um, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one for a much lighter episode next week. Peace out. See you guys in the next one.